Things are about to get a lot more immutable in JavaScript as we add a new language feature called records and tuples. Let's dig into it right now. Let's start off with a simple JavaScript array called numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is just console log this out. Now, can I change one of those numbers? For example, if I do numbers one equals 25, well, what are we going to get? Well, numbers is a const. So maybe we won't be allowed to do that. Let's try it out. Oops, actually, we can change it, even though numbers is defined as a const, much to Ryan Florence's chagrin. Why is this? So numbers is a constant reference to a location in memory. That location in memory just happens to be this array with 10, 20, and 30. And numbers itself is immutable, meaning that it can't change because it was defined as a constant. But the values inside of the array can change all they want. They're completely mutable, which is what records and tuples are trying to solve. In this case, tuples are what we'd use to create an immutable array. So here we go and just add a hash to the front of this. Now we've got a tuple instead of an array, and we can no longer change anything inside of that tuple because it is an immutable data structure. So if a tuple is an immutable array, well, what's a record? Well, let's bring up another quokka sheet. And in, in this case, we've got a person. We can output their name, in this case, John. We can also change that name to Jane. And I'll put that. So a person is very much mutable. So how do we turn this object into a record, which would make it deeply immutable? Well, we add a hash. But that's not good enough because we've assigned an object to the name key. And inside of a record, anything inside of there has to be either a record or a tuple. So now we can do this. And now I've got a deeply immutable person record. And again, we can no longer change the person.name.first. If you're a fan of immutability or immer, records and tuples are going to be music to your ears. So before I go on to my next example, let me show you how this is set up. For this example, I'm using the Quokka extension. That gives me that workbook functionality. I've configured this Quokka extension to use Babel for its transpilation. And I've configured my Babel config to use the proposal record and tuple plugin and to also import the polyfill automatically. And that polyfill comes from Bloomberg. Of course, all of this setup is available to you for free in a GitHub link in the description right down below, but you will need to install Quokka. So how do we use this in a React context? Well, let's go and check out Veet React with tuples and records. This setup is, of course, also available to you. This is a standard Veet React app, but we've made some changes in here to tell the React plugin that we want Babel and we want it to go looking for the configuration. And that configuration is exactly what we had before in the previous example where we brought in that plugin and then imported that polyfill. So here's a very simple application. We've got a first name and a last name field up here. When I type in here, I'm supposed to see the update above, but nothing's actually happening. So let's go take a look and see why that's the case. So right at the top, we've got this use date. This use date is tracking an object with our name in it. And then down here, we've got our input fields. And when we get our on change callback, we just set those values. That should work, right? But of course, no, that doesn't work. But we don't get any error. It just doesn't do anything. So what we really want to do here is do a set user with the existing user and then the override for the first. Well, let's keep that code in there. Just make sure this works. So does this work? Well, yeah, it does. Awesome. But wouldn't it be great if it actually blew up when somebody tried to do this? So in this case, it wouldn't work. It would actually just stop. So to do this, let's turn our user object into a user record. And then also when we update that user, we're going to go and also make that a record. Let's hit save. Now, I'm bringing up the console. If I try to type in there, we get an error that we are trying to assign a value to first, and it's immutable. So cool. All right, let's get rid of our buggy code and see that it still works. And now everything works just fine. I'm going to give you one additional variant, though. Let's go create a custom hook that allows us to safely use objects. We'll call it use safe object, and you give it an initial value. Then we track that value using a use state. Now value is mutable, so we're going to turn that into a value record. So we're going to take that value object and turn it into a record. And then we'll just return a new array that has that same signature of the value, in this case, a record, and the setter. So now if I change this to use safe object, I can get rid of my record and also bring back my buggy code. All right, let's see this blow up. 
Boom. Okay, there we go. Can I sign to first? And now let's get rid of my buggy code. And everything works just fine. So there you go, a nice custom hook for you that safely manages objects using records. And you can do exactly the same thing with tuples. Now I gotta say, this is gonna throw me for a loop because you state, I've always referred to returning a tuple. So I don't know, I guess I gotta get with the program and stop saying that you state returns tuples. I don't know, I guess we'll figure it out. A link to the stage two TC39 proposal for records and tuples is in a link in the description right down below. Be sure to go check that out for yourself and leave any comments for me if you have any questions about it. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of these videos on TC39 proposals. So if they're ones that are interesting to you, be sure to leave those in the comment section down below as well. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.